On day one, I spawned in as a baby snake god in Olympus. My home was under siege by none other than my brother, the god of darkness. Mom, dad, where are you? My brother's men were storming Olympus and killing my people left and right. I knew I didn't stand a chance against their power, so I desperately slithered through the crowd in search of our parents. When I finally found them, they were being confronted by my brother, who killed them both before my eyes. No! Now with that out of the way, nobody can stop me from becoming the ultimate god. Ta-ta, brother! The god of darkness began to charge an epic attack. I ran away. My brother chased after me and cornered me at the edge of the city. I'm only a baby! My wings are too small to fly! So you never! <laughs> I couldn't react quickly enough. My brother hit me with his tail, sending me flying over the edge towards the ground below. On day two, I fell down and down as the cloud clouds whipped by me, and I knew this would be the end of me. But wait, there was a little pond down below, so I concentrated all my efforts in order to land on it. Aha! I made it! My celebration was cut short when my brother's dark forces caught sight of me. There he is, after him! Uh-oh, gotta keep moving! I slithered away as fast as I could, but my brother's forces were quickly gaining on me. I couldn't keep this up forever, and knew it! Luckily, I had a genius idea to hide in a cave. The darkness would surely cover me, giving me enough time to slip away unnoticed. The cave was also too small for them to get in. Unfortunately for me, the second I stepped into the shadows, I realized there was no exit. Oh, come on! We'll wait out here as long as we need to catch you. My escape hadn't lasted very long at all. As I scrambled, thinking about what I could possibly do to get away, I could feel something brewing deep inside of me. It was power, a sort of raw power that I had never felt before. I unleashed it all out in a powerful attack that summoned the head of a dragon and unleashed an arrow of holy power. Unfortunately, this caused the ground below me to crumble. Whoa, wait! As the ground fell around me, I fell too, deep down into the unknown abyss below. On day three, I awoke in a dark cavern in front of a massive monster. It was letting out a loud and boisterous snore. This is not good! There was no way I could fight such a creature, not in my current form anyway, so I had no choice but to try and sneak around it. As I used all of my innate sneaking snake abilities, I felt I had this in the bag. Unfortunately, my overconfidence led me to slithering right over a stick with a loud crack. The monster turned around with intensity as it sprang to life, furious at having been awakened from its slumber. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! You disrupted my sleep. You will be smashed. I tried to reason with the cave guardian as it whipped itself into a flurry of pure blind rage. It wouldn't listen to my pleas, so I had no choice but to try and defend myself. I reached deep inside and tried to tap into my godly powers once more. For some reason though, it didn't seem to work. No, right when I need it to. Instead, I noticed I had a godly bow. Its arrows weren't as powerful as the other attack, but it was reliable and just as cool. This way, I was able to shoot the bow and dodge his attacks at the same time. Unfortunately for me though, I was still pretty inexperienced and the cave guardian was able to strike me over and over again with deadly accuracy. Beauty serpent, I'm gonna make you in the beast. As I struggled to keep up with the cave guardian's strength, it knocked me down to only half a heart. I knew deep down that this was it. I apologized to my parents for failing them and closed my eyes to accept my fate. On days four through seven, out of nowhere, a tiny angel flew in to help me. She cast a healing spell on me that restored my hearts and bought me some time. Bonzo, I'm Angie. I did what I can, but you need to escape. Thanks, Angie. I'm working on it. I looked around the cavern for something, anything for me to use to my advantage but the only thing I could see was walls. Thankfully, that gave me an idea. Hey, Bozo, I'm right here. The beast roared in rage as it charged right towards me. At the last possible second, I jumped to the side and his attack fully connected with the wall, breaking it down to rubble and clearing a path for my escape. Come on, Angie, this way. The angel and I ran through the hole in the wall with the monster hot on our trail. We were hopeful that we found the path to freedom. On the other side waiting was not freedom, however, but rather a secret base for my brother's army. My brother's forces must have heard the commotion with the monster because they all turned towards me and readied themselves to attack. I was sandwiched between the army and the beast with nowhere to run. This was the end. On days eight through 10, I remembered that I had wings. I might not be able to fly properly yet, but I knew I could use them to give me a jump boost. Here I go. I used my wings to jump way up high as Angela
Genji followed along, looking very happy. My brother's army and the beast clashed into each other way down below. Die, snake thing! You did it! You used your wings! I did! Now they're distracted with each other. That ought to keep them both busy for a while. Angie and I used this opportunity to head towards the exit of the underground area, and together, we booked it! We got to the end of the cave, but before us was a massive warrior! Ah, uh, Ronzo, I was hoping I'd find you here, scurrying around in the dark. Who are you? I am one of the God of Darkness's six top generals. It's my job to destroy you for him. Before I could react, he lunged at me and hit me with a weapon embodied with the power of the gods. His power was crushing. Suddenly, I was down to only half a heart. Before he could wipe me out completely, Angie cast a healing spell to keep me alive. But she warned me she was running out of mana. If I took another hit like that one, I was a goner. I knew I couldn't escape from this battle, so I braced myself for the toughest fight of my life. The demon general was extremely powerful, so I had to do everything I could to not get hit. I tried to use my smaller size and superior speed to my advantage, but as a result, I wasn't able to do much damage back. Although I did unlock a new multi-bow attack from my godly powers. However, it wasn't long into the battle that I realized I would never win in a straightforward fight. I would need to get sneaky. Angie, lure the cave guardian from earlier over here on my go ahead. But if I do that, it could hurt you. It's the only way. Just do it now. Angie flew away and attracted the guardian's attention by flying all around him like an insect. It followed with its familiar rage. Like a bullfighter, I waited until the last moment and jumped out of harm's way. But the general wasn't so lucky. The beast lunged directly into the general, killing him on impact. Suddenly, I felt the general's godly power enter into my body, and I transformed into an adult snake god, giving me 10 more hearts. Whoa! Defeating the generals make me stronger. I couldn't focus on that for too long. The beast was temporarily stunned from ramming into the general, and I had to use this to my advantage. Come on, Angie. We've got to track down more of my brother's generals. It's the only way to stop him. On days 15 through 17, Angie and I made our way out of the caves. Unfortunately, it happened just as my brother was flying overhead. We quickly took cover to avoid his gaze, but it was no good. Somehow he spotted me immediately, like he knew exactly where I was. You stubborn snake! How are you still alive? How did you find me? I'm your brother. Since we share the same blood, I can find you anywhere you try to hide. My brother charged up an immense attack, and if I didn't move out of the way, I'd be toast. Thankfully, I could feel that with my new form, I'd finally be able to fly. Just as the attack would have connected, I flew out of the way and took off into the sky. My brother launched several attacks in my direction, but Angie and I were able to avoid them. Go ahead and run, brother. I will find you. I knew he wasn't lying, so I needed to prepare. Angie and I decided to build a base to defend from any surprise attacks and found a nice patch of land we could call home. We quickly got to work building an ancient looking temple, perfect for a snake god like me. I used blocks such as terracotta, chiseled redstone, and waxed cut copper to add some trim around the pyramid. Angie, of course, got a room of her own. Before long, the temple was done. I looked upon my creation and it was good. Before I could rest, I heard shouting off in the distance, so I went to investigate. On days 18 through 21, I made my way over to the source of the shouting, only to find my brother's men holding a group of fish people hostage. Please, we're a peaceful people. Let us go. No can do. The god of darkness has plans for you, fishy. I had no idea what my brother's plan was for them, and I wasn't about to find out. I charged into battle using my newly unlocked godly powers, but I couldn't perform any advanced spells yet. Despite their numbers, the fight was pretty even, and I was even gaining the edge. Call for backup. One of the guards called for backup. Up, so I knew it was only a matter of time before I was surrounded. I used the last chance to break the fish people out from their captivity, hoping they could help me. Thank you so much. We are forever in your debt. Just as he finished his sentence, my brother's reinforcements arrived. I was outnumbered. There was no way I could take on that many of them. Quickly, follow us. The fish people took off running, and I followed closely behind. On days 22 through 25, I was following close behind the fish people while being chased by reinforcements. There wasn't much land left for us to keep running. I didn't know what we were gonna do. Come on, this way. He led us to a body of water and we all jumped in. I can breathe underwater? Cool. Luckily, I was a god, so I had water breathing. After a while, it seemed like we lost the reinforcements that were trailing us. I continued to follow closely behind the fish people until we swam through a crevice. Welcome to our home. 
The fish people lived in some kind of underwater camp. It was run down with oxidized copper and not even enough space for all of them. Why do you guys live down here? Don't you have an ancient city or something? Our great city is under control to one of the God of Darkness's generals. We need your help to reclaim it. I thought about it and remembered the last time I faced a general, I got stronger. If I could defeat another one, I could gain their godly essence for myself. All right, let's do it. During days 26 to 28, one of the fish people led me to their city. When we arrived, the place was in ruin, and there was a statue in honor of the god of darkness. It was still being built by the captured fish people. I've had enough with all this tyranny. I began my infiltration. There were guard sharks swimming around, and I did my best to evade them. There looked to be too many for me to take on all at once. I'm almost to the entrance. Just gotta hide in the seaweeds. As I was approaching the entrance to the city, I noticed one of the sharks picking on a fish person. Person. I knew I had to intervene, even if it meant blowing up my cover. Pick on someone your own size. And who do you think you are? Your worst nightmare, the snake god. The shark darted forward in the water, aiming at me with its powerful jaws. And then I was able to retaliate by shooting it with my godly bow and holy arrows. The shark definitely packed a punch, but with a one-on-one -on -one fight, it was no match for me. As I thought I was winning the battle, the sound of our fighting had attracted more sharks to our location. I was outnumbered, but I knew I was stronger. Come on, is that all you got? I won't give up that easily. It was looking grim for me. The sharks just kept coming. I thought this was the end. For the days of 29 to 32, a group of fish people intervened in my fight. Go on, Bronzo. Continue after the general and we will hold off his guards. Thank you. I won't forget this. With the sharks now distracted, I swam as fast as I could through the rest of the city until I got to the very heart. Waiting in the center was my brother's sea general. So... Bronzo, the little snake god has appeared. The god of darkness mentioned you might be paying me a visit. So my brother warned you about me. That means he sees me as a threat. More like an inconvenience. Yeah, right. I'm giving you one chance to surrender the city, or else. Or else what? I'll have to take it back from you by force. Oh, I'd like to see you try. Let me show you what true force is. The sea general reared back, then charged at me. This guy was fast. He was also definitely way better suited for the water than I was. He was able to harness it in ways that I never even dreamed of. He dragged me in with whirlpools and launched currents of water at me, then would snap at me with his giant fangs. I wasn't helpless though. Thanks to all of my godly powers, I shot arrow after arrow at the serpent and withered away at his health. It was a tough fight, tougher than any other battle I had come up against before. I was down to my last few arts, and just as I was beginning to think I might not come out on top, I landed one more hit on the sea general that wiped him out. So, it seems that I have been bested. The city is no longer yours. Perhaps not, but watch your back, snake god. Vengeance will seek you out. As the sea general died, I gained his godly essence and became stronger. I had 10 more hearts and I was able to use the godly dragon head power that I only been able to use once before. Whoa, this is awesome. With no more time to waste, I rushed back to help the fish people. On days 33 through 35, I saw the fish people and the sharks battling it out. This battle looks neck and neck. I should probably go help them. As quickly as I could, I rushed over to assist the fish people in the battle. With my new dragon head power, I was a lot stronger and I managed to defeat the sharks with ease. Those sharks were no match for me. Thank you, Snake God, for helping us reclaim our city. This isn't much, but I want you to have this to show our appreciation. He then tossed over some snakeskin armor. Hey, this is great. I'll be able to defend myself a lot better now. Thanks. I then made my way back to the surface. After some traveling, I got back to the beach, only to stumble upon my brother standing right in front of me. You've stirred up enough trouble, brother. It's past time I took care of you. He then charged up an attack and let loose, spewing flame and smashing everything with his massive claws. Uh-oh, this isn't good. His powerful attack struck me over and over until I was left in a blaze of fire. The heat was too much for me to handle. In mere moments, everything went black. During days 36 to 39, I woke up in some sort of sky arena. There were crowds of creatures watching me. What's going on? Suddenly, the cave guardian from earlier dropped into the arena. Looks like we meet again. 
Immediately, the Molten Knight began attacking me, dealing lots of damage. His fiery blast felt like the power of a thousand suns against my skin. The crowd cheered. It was almost like they were against me. Look, you don't want to mess with me. I've gotten a lot stronger since the last time we battled. Stop yapping and start fighting. I used my newfound strength and powers to fight back. With my arrows, snake god head, and holy divine power, I pushed back against the might of the giant beast. The guardian was just as impressive as I remembered, summoning waves of heat and attacking at me with its sword recklessly. I had grown a lot since the last time I faced him though, and within minutes, I had him on his last legs. With only one last attack, I defeated the guardian once and for all. Take that! No one beats the snake god! The crowd began to boo at me. I was right in my previous guess that they were against me. Don't boo me! Aren't you entertained? I headed towards the exit as some in the crowd threw snowballs at me. I then jumped from the sky arena down to the ground floor. Tough crowd! On days 40 to 43, I returned to my base to resupply and heal up. Whew, that was more difficult than I expected it to be. When I got there, I noticed a lot of the fish people were at my base. Oh, Snake God, we have spoken to one another and decided we wish to serve you. Please take these offerings from the sea. Surely they will be to your liking. Oh wow, this is a lot. Thank you. As I accepted their offerings, I felt my scrapes and bruises heal up as I was restored to full power. I hereby accept you as my people. Let me build you a place in my home. I immediately got to work making the fish people an area they could live in. I made sure to make it aquatic themed so they would feel comfortable. After I finished building, Angie came up to me. You see how much good this did for you? You need to find more followers. The more a god has, the more powerful they can become. That sounds like my plan of action then. With that in mind, I set off to search for anyone willing to dedicate their services to the snake god. On days 44 to 46, I had been wandering around the desert searching for new followers to join me. While traveling through the desert, I heard an explosion and screams in the distance. What's that? I should probably go check it out. I followed the screams and it led me to a desert village being attacked by fire mobs. Oh no, what's happening? Please, someone help us, please. I gotta help them. I rushed in with no hesitation and attacked. With my powerful strength, I quickly defeated the fire mobs. That was too easy. My brother's goons are nothing for me now. Thank you for saving us. Glad I could help. As I was talking to the villagers, a giant fire monster fell onto one of their buildings. He started shooting fireballs, striking the villagers, killing most of them. No! <laughs> so you're the reason why this is all happening. Yes, and you're next. He then started to attack me. The general wasted no time in summoning meteors to rain down on me. They exploded with terrifying force, scattering fire and embers everywhere. Then he leaped up into the air and slammed down with his gigantic fists. I was able to attack back with my trusty godly bow. After what felt like hundreds of arrows, I readied the finishing attack, my awesome god snake head. I charged up and launched at him, and the fire general fell dead. After I absorbed the general's power, I gained 10 more hearts and a new power that emitted powerful beams of sound. From days 47 to 50, I checked in on the few surviving villagers. Are you okay? Is there any way I can help? There's nothing left for us here. How would you like to come back with me and stay at my base? That would be fantastic. Pack up, guys. We're heading off with the snake god. As we made our way back to the base, I heard a ghostly voice whisper to me. It seemed to be coming from a cave in the distance. Bronzo. Hey, you guys keep moving on. The base is just up ahead. I'm gonna go investigate something. All right, see you soon. As I got towards the cave, the voice kept beckoning me to come even closer. Come to the cave. I made my way to the entrance of the cave, and I could still hear the voice. Bronzo. I decided to continue further inside. On days 51 to 54, I traveled through the twisting tunnels of the cavern, which led me all the way to the underground dungeon. Wow, this place is huge! As I stepped into the dungeon, a snake spirit appeared in front of me. Young snake god, the power to defeat the god of darkness can be obtained by completing this trial, should you wish to accept. Consider it already done. Very well, you may enter. 
The gate that had been blocking disappeared, along with the Medusa, allowing me passage. I slithered in and began to make my way through the dungeon. Right off the bat, there were enemies that leapt out to attack me one after another. Who put all these skeletons here? I fought my way through them as I traveled through the dungeon, fending them off with my godly powers. There were archers, skeletons with swords, and ones who could even do magic. At last, I made it to what appeared to be the final chamber of the dungeon. There in front of a skull statue was the Lich King, ruler of the skeletons in this dungeon. I am here for the power to defeat the God of Darkness. A little worm like you wishes to defeat the God of Darkness. <laughs> that really tickles my funny bone. What could a thing like you ever hope to achieve against someone like him? You're nothing! I don't care what you say. I'm here for that power, and I'm not leaving without it. The Lich King's taunting had really upset me. Using my rage as fuel, I launched an epic volley of attacks at him. The Lich King would disappear and reappear behind me, only to slash at me with his giant scythe. That's fighting dirty. The Lich King then reared back, and from him, a wave of darkness emitted. I continued using all of the powers in my arsenal, including my newest roar ability. It took a lot out of me to fight this guy, but the Lich King finally perished. As I stood there relishing in my victory, the snake spirit from earlier appeared again. Your anger makes you stronger. You must embrace it if you wish to defeat your brother. But I don't want to rule with anger and fear. Then I'd be no better than my brother. The Medusa did not reply as she disappeared. With no one left to talk to, I left the dungeon and headed back to my base. On days 55 to 57, I was almost to my base when I encountered the villagers in an open field. Hey everyone, what happened? Why are you stopped? We're so tired and we don't have the energy to continue any further. You know what? I'll build you all a home here. This seems like a nice place to settle down. I immediately went to work. There were a lot of villagers, so I figured that I might as well go ahead and make them an entire village. I put a lot of work into each house and the landscaping, so they wouldn't feel like they were missing anything from their old home. By the time I was done, the village looked perfect. Thank you so much, Snake God. Please, take these offerings. No, no, I can't accept that. I already have enough. Then allow us to help you build an idol of yourself so that we may thank you. That sounds a lot better. Let's do it. The villager and I got to building the statue. We started with the shape of my head as a base, then began to add the details with all different kinds of blocks. It was fortunate that the villagers had so much, and I had gathered plenty of cool things in my journey so far, because it really came in handy. We also made sure to make it super big, so that it would scare off any would-be attackers. The villagers needed a place to put all of their offerings to me, so I put out a place in the front of the statue mouth with lots of pots so they could store the items. There we are, all done. This is wonderful. We'll take good care of it. I was tired after all that work, and it left me wanting to take a nap. I figured where I was was pretty safe, so I fell asleep right in front of my statue. On days 58 to 61, I had a nightmare. I was back in Olympus during the Great Siege. I revisited seeing my parents getting killed by my brother. No, not again! I won't let you get away with this, brother! <laughs> and how do you plan to do that? I've grown stronger. I'm powerful enough to fight you. Oh, really? All I see is my weak little brother. Just then, I was transformed back into my smaller self. No! My powers! Still think you can take me on, little brother? I hate you! In a furious rage, I charged to attack my brother. To my surprise, I flew straight through him. He was just an illusion. I had heard the voice of someone laughing from above. I can't believe you fell for that. In an instant, I transformed back into my larger form, and the illusion began to dissipate. On day 62 to 64, I realized I was in a misty swamp. Not only that, I had been duped by someone. Who are you? Face me! <laughs> there it was again. There was nothing but that laugh. As I looked around for the source of the laughter, I was attacked by a horde of zombies. Whoa, where did you come from? There were so many zombies, I used my godly bow and my snake god head to cut them down one by one. Eventually, I defeated the horde and continued into the swamp. The voice had to be coming from somewhere. Confirming my suspicions, only a little bit away was an enormous arena, and in the center was none other than the Amethyst General, the fourth general of the God of Darkness. 
What's wrong, Bronzo? Not sleeping well? You crossed the line. No one interrupts my nap time. The Amethyst General wasted no time in attacking me, shooting magical beams and trying to whack me with their scepter. I was quick to dodge out of the way and fire back with my godly bow and beams of energy. Next, it summoned some eyes on chains to chase after me, as well as some podiums that fueled their magical abilities. I went and broke them as fast as I could while still attacking the Amethyst General. In the end, despite all of the Amethyst General's magical effects, I was able to defeat them. That shows you not to mess with me. As they died, I absorbed their godly essence. It granted me 10 more hearts, as well as transformed me into my final form. Wow, look at me, I look awesome. It was at that point that the dreamscape began to crumble around me and I realized I was waking up. On days 65 to 68, I woke up in front of my snake god statue. I was surrounded on all sides by my followers. Whoa, what's the occasion? Snake God, we were concerned. You have been asleep for several days. Well, I'm all good. Did anything happen while I was out? Yes, in fact, some raiders came by, but they were scared off by the statue. What? Stay here. I'll go take care of him right now. Hang on, Bronzo. What is it? These people need my help. Jeez, I just found you. Can't you say hi? Now listen to me. You still can't face your brother alone. We need more allies. Fine. Who do you have in mind? I think you should look for the craftsmen who live in the mountains. Their skill at forging armor and weapons will be vital for destroying the armies of darkness. That sounds like a great idea. Thanks, Angie. I'll get right on it. With a new goal ahead of me, I headed off to the mountains. During days 69 to 72, I made my way towards the mountains through a thick forest. Eventually, the forest turned into a wasteland around some kind of lumber mill. Seeing the beautiful nature being destroyed filled me up with rage. I approached the lumberjack and demanded to know why they were destroying this place. Go on, explain yourself or I'll hurt you. Wait, wait, the Dark God's general ordered us to level this whole forest. What do they need all that wood for? Nothing, we've been ordered to burn it all. I looked around and saw lumberjacks tossing logs into large bonfires. This is horrible, where is the general? Only the foreman would know that. They're in the mill. Take me to them. I want to give them a piece of my mind. On days 73 to 75, I arrived to the mill. The inside was filled with bunches of logs and crates stacked into piles. The lumberjack I was with ran up to the foreman, pointed back to me, then quickly ran away. I'm going to talk to him myself. You! I'm demanding right now that you cease all operations. But, but I can't do that. The general would have my head. Then tell me where this general is. Don't make me take your head instead. Y yes, right away. The general's base is in the mountains. In the mountains where? Show me. I would if I could. Please, I swear it. It's just that the general destroyed the bridge connecting the mountains, so I cannot travel there. I felt an all-consuming rage overtake me. I was so upset that I began to destroy the mill with fire. Take me to the bridge now. Of course, right away, follow me. On days 76 through 79, the foreman took me to the ruins of the bridge beside the mill. Why are you still taking orders from the general? Couldn't you just run away? Some of my lumberjack friends are being held hostage across the bridge for misbehaving according to the general. If we resist him, then he'll do the same to us. Well, I'll make sure that doesn't happen to you, but only after you repair the bridge. Yes, sir. The foreman went to work repairing the broken bridge, just as I demanded. However, as they were working, some of the dwarf general's men arrived. Back off! I jumped into the fray to fight off the attackers. I fought off the dwarves with my powerful godly bow, but their cleric kept healing them. I set my sights on them instead and took out their healer so I could deal with the rest of the army uninterrupted. I shot volleys of my godly arrows into the minions and then used my roar ability on them. They went flying off the side of the cliff into the chasm below. Bit by bit, I picked off the warriors, but they had me in numbers. I had to fight carefully, otherwise I could easily be overwhelmed. I fought with everything I had at my disposal, but there were still too many for me to win. I honed in all my powers and unleashed one final attack, killing the warriors all at once. By the time the final goon went down, the bridge was finally complete. Great job, foreman. Thanks, scary snake god. Now go set your friends free. The foreman did as I said, and freed the other lumberjacks, but they didn't run. In fact, they looked scared. What's wrong? Please don't eat us. We'll do whatever you say. Tell us, what can we do to appease you? Hmm. Do not destroy 
any more of the forest. And someone, take me to the general's base. If both things are done, I will not eat you. On days 80 through 83, a lumberjack led me through the mountains. Eventually, we reached the outside of the general's base. It was a massive mine inside of a mountaintop. You know this is gonna get messy, right? Oh, I know. I seen what the dwarf general is capable of. I ventured inside of the mine and saw the fifth general. Thank ye for slithering Timmy. I hate having to hunt down me prey. Is that why you're cutting down the forest? Easier hunting? Actually, it's to keep the lumberjacks tired and busy. Less trouble that way. Well, you got some trouble today. The dwarf general was unlike any opponent I had faced. He wielded a shield and charged at me. I tried slithering around to dodge his attacks. He then welded a spear and threw it at me, dealing a good amount of damage. Then he smacked the ground, releasing flames around him. He also conjured up a sword and used it for spinning attacks and slashes. However, his arsenal of weapons was no match for my tough god snake skin. You think you're better than me? I've seen ye strike more fear in those lumberjacks than I ever could. Maybe because I'm a god and you're just a mere mortal. Finally, I destroyed the dwarf general. And with that, I gained a new godly power, the ability to harness the strength of the sun and create a beam. We give up, we give up. Here, take this dwarf forged armor as an offering. I accept your surrender and your armor. Now join me and follow. I will build you a new home. On days 84 through 86, I had found a new spot to begin building the dwarfs a new home, one better than what the dwarf general gave them. I started by excavating the side of a mountain. Then I added some support beams all around so that the cave wouldn't collapse. And finally, I added some furniture all around so they could relax after working hard in the mines. Once I had finished making the area for the dwarves, one of the lumberjacks caught up to me. This place is amazing. You're not so bad after all, Snake God. Could you maybe build us a home too? Thank you, and I hope you can can continue to spread the word. I've been getting somewhat of a bad reputation lately. I'm sure I can build you and your lumberjack friends a fancy log cabin out in the tundra. That would be great. I then traveled to the snowy Arctic and began building the cabin. I made sure to use lots of the wood that was chopped down from the other forest to conserve mother nature. I added rooms and even a fireplace to keep them warm in this cold weather. Thank you so much, Snake God. Please take this offering. Wow, thanks, a diamond axe. This is one of the best offerings I've gotten thus far. Although I had gotten so powerful by now, there was still one general to take out and I was feeling confident on defeating them. As I was about to leave, Angie had found me again. Bronzo, I just wanted to warn you that the next general is the nastiest of them all. You need to be careful. How bad could they be? Just as I said that, there was a large explosion in the distance. I need to investigate that. On days 87 through 89, I arrived at a village that had been ruined. What happened here? A horrible creature flew overhead and destroyed our village in a matter of seconds. It must have been the general. Where did they go after? They went in the sky. Thank you. I made my way up to the sky and looked for the general. As I was flying, I saw a stronghold ahead in the distance. That must be where the general is. I headed over to the fortress to check it out. I explored the area and no one was around. While I was looking, I saw a note on the ground from the final general. Unlike my allies that you took out, I will finish you off myself for good. Once I had finished reading the note, I looked up and saw her goons flying around me. If I want to find the general, I have to fight their goons. On days 90 to 92, I fought off all the goons one by one. They were the toughest I faced so far. I really had to dig down into my bag of moves to retaliate. I used my godly bow with my dragon attack. I also showed off my new sunbeam that incinerated the flying beast's armor. The goons would shoot poison at me and swirl around mid-fight to attack me. I managed to take them all out, except for one. I used this opportunity to interrogate them. Where is your general? I ain't talking. You should just finish me off. Okay, that's not a problem. Wait, I was just bluffing. Then talk. She's at the headquarters just west of here. Thanks for your cooperation and good riddance. I then didn't keep my promise and fired my sunbeam, killing the final goon instantly. Next, I flew west and eventually I found the HQ. It wasn't hidden, but rather wide open, almost as if they wanted me to come. Great! I love traps! They never expect me to actually fall for them. I landed and looked around, but nobody was present. Come out, you coward! Suddenly, I was hit with a multitude of explosive attacks. What the heck is going on? During days 93 to 95, I was under attack. 
I couldn't figure out where all those explosions were coming from. You want some of me? Then come get some! Above me was a massive serpent in the sky, dropping explosives from above. The serpent looked angelic, like she was sent from the heavens. Who are you? Come down here and fight me! The sky general circled around my head, like a hawk, stalking its prey. She was trying to intimidate me with her massive amounts of radiant power. Can't you tell, you imbecile? I'm the Sky General, the strongest general in command. What makes you so strong? Back down or I'll make you regret it. <laughs> Go ahead and try it. I unleashed an attack and tried to take the oversized general down. She was high in the sky, so my best bet was using ranged attacks to have a chance of landing a hit on her. I shot at her with my godly arrows to dwindle her health down bit by bit. All the while, the Sky General summoned powerful spikes from the sky to pierce through my scales. They dealt loads of damage, but I held on to life. I couldn't lose now! I retaliated with my son's blessing, just scorched through her armor, but she hung on after the hit. No matter how many times I attacked her, the Sky General seemed prepared for all of it. I fought with all of my might, but they were incredibly strong. Neither side was giving in. You can't defeat me! I'm gonna fight until you're finished! You foolish god! I haven't even shown you a fraction of my power! Take this! Suddenly, the general fired a powerful attack. I tried to avoid it, but I wasn't fast enough. It hit me, and my whole body grew dizzy. What's going on? I can't focus on anything! I couldn't help but to succumb to their spell. Soon, I blacked out. On days 96 to 98, I found myself in my childhood home. I was at Olympus again as a baby, and next to me was my baby brother, the god of darkness. Where am I? And why am I so small? I looked around and noticed that our parents were standing before the both of us. We are so proud of you, my sons. One day, you'll both be the gods of Olympus and rule this kingdom together. I don't need Bronzo. I could rule this kingdom alone. Now, son, you have to share the responsibilities with your brother. Together, Olympus will prosper. No, I want all the power for myself. If you let me take it all, I can show you just how much better Olympus would be. Watch your mouth. That is no way a god should treat his kingdom or family. Go to your room this instant and think about what you've said. My brother left the room in a fit of rage. As I watched my brother walk away, he mumbled something. I will show everyone how powerful I can become alone. I'll take all of the godly power for myself and make everyone bow down to me, the god of darkness! Brother, wait! I rushed after him, hoping that I could stop this tyranny. But as I slithered closer, I was teleported into thin air. On day 99, I teleported into the mysterious end dimension. There was nothing around me but darkness for miles. And somehow, I was floating on air. This place is creepy! What's going on? I looked around, when out of nowhere, a massive figure walked in front of me. It was my brother, the god of darkness, but as a powerful adult. Hello, Bronzo. Brother, you don't have to do this. Why are you taking all of the power for yourself? I don't need any help from the likes of you. Our parents spoke of unity, but they were wrong. All I need is more power, and I can rule this entire world single-handedly. Please, you can still stop this, and we can rule together. Quiet! In a fit of rage, the god of darkness attacked. My brother blasted at me with his godly breath. I was blasted away by the sheer force of it all, and I was forced to run for my life. I would have tried to defend myself, but I was only a baby. Without my incredible power, his strength was too crushing to retaliate. I ran for my life, unsure of how or why I was in the void. Just then, I heard the voice of the Sky General echo through the realm. <laughs> Wait a second, all of this must be the work of the sixth general. This is all in my head. My courage caused me to transform back into my godly adult form, regaining all of my hearts and powers. Afterwards, my brother vanished into thin air. He was just an illusion made by the sky general. I snapped back to reality to find myself with the sky general like before. No, my magic! It'll take more than an illusion to stop me. I continued my battle with the Sky General, but this time I meant business. 
She rained down her godly projectiles onto me, and I evaded them with speed and grace. The nightmare she put me through only strengthened my resolve further. I was going to defeat her and stop the wrath of the God of Darkness, no matter what. I fired my attacks onto the Sky General with everything I had, and they seemed to do far more damage than before. The sleeping spell must have drained all of her energy, leaving her vulnerable for my counterattacks. I didn't let up. This was my chance for victory. Finally, I managed to bring the Sky General to her breaking point. I may die here. Tomorrow, your brother will bring ruin to these lands. Not if I have anything to say about it. I fired into her with one final blow, killing her while she flew. The Sky General died, and I gained her godly power, making me stronger than ever. And it felt like I lost all of my rage. Yes, I'm back to normal. Time to return to Olympus. On day 100, I took to the skies and returned to my home of Olympus. To my horror, my brother had changed the area to be corrupted by his dark energy. What did he do to this place? This has to end now. I swooped in and landed onto the cloud. There, my brother was already waiting for me. So good to see you again, Bronzo. Do you like what I've done with the place? Turn everything back to how it used to be, and maybe I'll consider sparing you. Ha! Even after I took all of the godly power for myself, you still think you have a chance to stand against me? I've gotten some power of my own. Have you been able to check in on your generals? <laughs> Those worthless swine, they were just more pawns. Clearly they underestimated you, but I won't make the same mistake. No amount of their power will save you. I'm willing to take those chances. The two of us collided in the final battle. It was God versus God, brother versus brother, of who would claim Olympus. He started by flying super high in the air and then flew down at me, stomping on the ground and making it shake beneath me. I knew then that he was not going to take it easy on me. I blasted my arrows at him so I could keep a good distance from him to evade his air attacks. As he flew through the air, I struck him with my powerful sun blessing, which dealt a great amount of damage and slowed him down. My brother was smart though. He knew I was trying to avoid his air attacks. He then blasted me with his powerful flames, dealing massive damage. I was on the ropes, but so was the God of Darkness. I put everything I had into my final attack and blasted my evil brother into oblivion. The skies cleared and the day was saved. I was finally dubbed the true God of Olympus. 